it all started so harmlessly. We were laughing and laughing and laughing. Unbeknownst to them, Vladimir had once again let them down. For Vladimir's thoughts had turned to darkness, and the rain had not yet begun. Vladimir's simple charm wooed them into a false sense of well-being. I got a call last week from this French guy, Samuel Blumenthal from Le Monde. On that day, he introduced the Frenchman for the first time and was all smiles. We've got to take off our shoes and walk across. He began making unreasonable demands, which they felt compelled to obey. They never really taught us fencing in school. I know they did, but they didn't really, like, teach it. It was always unsettling when Vladimir waxed nostalgic. The art of the kill was something we had to teach ourselves. As twilight began to trickle across the sky, Vladimir's mood became sullen and self-deprecating. Suddenly all this lingo came in, and I'm behind the times. He pretended to laugh along with the others, but inside he was seething. Once back inside the familiar confines of the schooner tavern, Vladimir's mood improved dramatically. Can I get a marquee? Shake it. He reminisced about a small child he had met on a bygone day. I, uh, I did not think it was going to take uh, really so long to get here, so I didn't need anything before that. My whole idea, by the way, was to do somebody where we literally get them in the woods. Heads spinning, the group kept a low profile as dinner was served. When the evening came to a close, they texted snapshots of the day back and forth amongst themselves. <laughs> 